I'm going to give you a brief overview once again, because it's been a few months since we met. Um, of course, the City of Columbia, through the um, HUD, um, our federal program, we received $18 million, $18.5 million um, in federal, federal grants uh, allocated towards our mitigation program, and we received those dollars back in 2020. Uh, those dollars were allocated to the city of Columbia to assist with many of the mitigation um, uh, concerns that was um, arise from the the flood from from the 2015, and so we've been um, commissioned to utilize those dollars to um, you know do some some great improvements, particularly as it relates to our canal. Um, we're going to use those dollars towards uh, one of our generators and, of course, build a new fire station. So the key in terms of the mitigation funding is to certainly uh, create and, um, and rectify uh, many of the issues that we experienced during, during the recent flood back in 2015. Um, so that in the next, if there's if there is a next disaster, we'd be in a much better, uh, much better state in terms of managing, uh, particularly as it relates to um, the flood. So the key is to ensure that those dollars, because they are coming in from the federal government, HUD, that they are um, assisting 50% uh, of those dollars that we must ensure that it is uh, assisting 50% below of the AMI uh, residents in the city of Columbia. So there's many um, um, studies that have been done in, as it relates to, to ensure that these dollars qualify uh, towards these particular um, approved activities. So these are the approved projects that the funds have been allocated towards. Uh, we will be um, installing a new generator over at Fleet Services, uh, also building a new fire station in the Olympia area. Uh, we've repaired uh, the, the lock gates and we also will be uh, instructing uh, const constructing some new head gates uh, the canal head gates. In March, I did provide you a proposed budget um, at that time. As we have moved forward with, with the activities, uh, start seeing some true numbers come through, um, looking at the design, um, uh, reviewing costs, we have had to make some, some, some adjustments to our budget. Um, so if you notice on the allocation column, number one, which is what I presented in March, and also reviewing the differences up on the allocation number two, we've had to make a few adjustments. So if you notice, particularly as I uh, want to point out towards the activities, uh, the approved activities uh, that we will be supporting um, with these dollars, the fleet services generator, the head gates, and the Olympic fire station. We had to adjust our numbers as it relates to the generator. Uh, we have, have, have had to allocate $1.1 million to support that particular project. Uh, we have made some adjustments as in terms of the allocation for our head gates. We had originally allocated 8 million. We have adjusted that to 5.4 million. And we've allocated a little bit more in terms of the Olympic fire station. We originally had allocated 8.3 million. So we've adjusted that allocation to $10.7 million as it relates to setting aside those funds to build um, the fire station. In the column that says spent today, that kind of outlines that we, what we have spent thus far uh, in terms of the funds allocated towards those various categories. And then also outlines what we have um, still remaining to assist with those, um, with those projects. So we still have 92% of those funds uh, remaining to support those particular projects and funds allocated. Any question as it relates to the budget? Ma'am, I have a question. Um, the allocation on the headgate, that's a significant decrease in allocation. Uh, is there, can you provide a little more fidelity as to if the 5.4 million that's currently allocated will meet the requirements that we have planned for the headgates, please? 
So with the head gates, uh, we have reduced that considerably quite a bit, as a matter of fact. Um, so we are getting some commitments uh, from the city to to assist with the um, you know with the expense as it relates to the head gates. And Tiffany, you may have some some information more on that because I know it, it's going to come from the water division. You have any information? Um. Unfortunately, Felicia, no, I don't. Um, that's simply not my area of expertise, but okay. I will um, reach out to Frank Estrich, who is the Director of Utilities, to see if I can get some more information from him and be able to um, provide that information to you to possibly disseminate to everybody. But um, as of right now, no, I don't have any additional information in regards to that. And that's fine. I did put you on the spot in regards to that, but it is coming from our water area. Um, um, our assistant city manager, Clint Sheely, he um, is in communication with um, city staff in, re in regards to the dollar amount that, uh, of course, authorized through the city uh, that will be designed to support that particular activity. Thank you. Okay, just a brief overview of the generators information I provided um, in March. Just want to go over it once again of the location where the generator will be located. It's going to be at our fleet services uh, facility over there off of Colonial Drive. Uh, the generator, this is just totally an example of what the generator may, may look like. Um, it, it will be a permanent fixture um, that will be placed on that particular site. Um, is designed to assist with, you know, with providing power in the event that there is a uh, disaster. Uh, that way, once the generator um, is installed and power goes out, the generator will automatically um, you know, kick in in terms of providing power, so there's not an interruption in in services in, in that area. Of course, it will be installed on the outside, uh, and I'm going to show you where we've started uh, the construction. These pictures was taken about two weeks ago, uh, coming in from our engineer, just kind of give you an idea of where, uh, where it's located. Of course, I will speak with my engineer and he's not like, oh, wow, I thought we've, you know, done a little bit more work than that. So he said, Felicia, he said, the great majority of the work that's been done thus far is underground. So if you see those great piping that's coming out, um, of the ground there, kind of muddle in the water. So that's part of the work that's been done um, as relates to preparing for the generator. This right here is a timeline uh, that has been etched out uh, from our engineer to kind of give you an idea on um, when we expect for the generator to be installed and ready for um, operation. So if you notice there, the generator commissioning, that's when the timeline we expect to receive of the generator in March. And then of course, it'll go through a series of testing And then we hope to have everything ready to go and project completed around the end of March of next year. So if you notice, there's a lot of work that has to go into um, preparing and installing uh, this generator. Okay, our outline right here is our budget once again. Uh, kind of shows uh, where the allocation of the funds have been broken down in terms of the environmental reviews, uh, funds allocated towards the engineer expense, uh, also towards um, the construction to install some David Bacon um, expenses as well, and of course, staff costs. Okay. The Olympia Fire Station. So, um, of course, this is what our current fire station looks like over there on Ferguson Street uh, in the Olympia area. So we're looking at proposing a new fire station off of Bluff Road. Um, 
we've taken up several parcels over there um, that will be uh, utilized to build this new fire station. Um, down below is just an outline of what the fire station will look like. So this will be one of the more modern state-of-the-art type facilities. Um, of course, we're excited uh, for this, this new fire station. It will better, better serve that area over there. Um, and so I want to provide you a project timeline um, on how um, the expectation on when the fire station hopefully will be ready um, for operation. Right now, we are working on um, you know, creating the schematic um, design. So we work with our architectural engineer with that. Um, hopefully, we'll have that ready uh, by November of this year. Uh, and then, of course, a, a design um, development um, layout of it by December. Um, creating our construction documents on how it will be um, built by April of next year, and then um, put it out for bid of June, and hopefully we can start construction um, August and then have it completed um, of December of 2026. So again, it's gonna be one of the um, more modern designed facility um, out of all of our fire station that we currently have now. So I think it's gonna be really nice serving that particular area um, on that side of town. Any questions or concerns? Okay, so I've got an outline of um, the, the revised budgets as, as it relates to the fire station in the various, various categories on how, where the funds will be allocated, utilize the mitigation funds. Just kind of give you an overview of how those dollars will be um, utilized as relates to supporting the project. Okay, so uh, the head gates, uh, as you notice, it's very important in terms of controlling our water supply um, and protecting the city. Of course, with um, the canal provides water um, to all of our city water plants, uh, our treatment plants, our portable water supply, and supply, and it also provides up to 129,000 uh, water services to our citizens in our surrounding areas. This right here is a, um, um, diagram, a diagram up top on the right-hand side uh, of our various um, water treatment plant areas and our can canal areas that we um, use to support uh, the city in terms of water services. So to provide you a project update in regards to uh, the head gates. And so um, November, we're hoping to have the, uh, the initiation of procurement for the Head Gates project ready to move forward. Um, once we receive approval uh, from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, um, we can move forward with procurement um, and hopefully we'll have that ready to go in November. Um, start working on the Head Gates project. So we're still in the environmental phases on it. So with this substantial amendment, I share with you um, the adjustment in the budget. So when there's an adjustment in the budget, it automatically um, generate a, another substantial amendment. Of course, we're on our second substantial amendment too to outline what those the adjustment in the budget is. And so we're required to publish that. Uh, we're in the process of having that uh, amendment translated in, into uh, Spanish. And as soon as we have that completed, we'll have that posted on our website. Hopefully that process will be completed in the next two to three weeks. 
and it'll be on our website with those numbers, um, the adjustment in the budget that I shared with you earlier in the presentation. Of course, we received those funds in 2020. We do have 12 years to disperse those dollars uh, to support those projects that we, we have outlined. And so it is important that, that we move forward um, and get those projects underway so that we won't run into any issues or concerns in terms of expending those dollars. Um, so 12 years from 2020 is actually placed at 2032. And hopefully um, by that time, we'll be uh, well, well underway and, and completed with those projects um, and can actually close out um, this particular program. So it is required that we have 50% of those funds that was allocated to us uh, that we received in 2020 in six years. And so we received it in 2020. So we had 2024. And so it is important that we uh, move forward with some of those projects so that we can start dispersing funds. HUD will do a timeliness test to, to, to check where we are in terms of our expenditures. And so that's the reason why we're trying to follow the timelines um, to get those projects underway. Any questions? Felicia, if by chance we do not um, expend the 50% by the six years, is there a penalty involved or what is the, um, is there a penalty for, for not meeting that requirement? It is not a penalty, but we do have to report to HUD uh, what have been our um, uh, hurdles, um, um, uh, things that we had to face in terms of uh, that have caused us not to, to meet that particular deadline. Um, so we have to share with them what things we have and put steps in place um, to ensure that we are moving forward to um, have those funds dispersed by the deadline. So uh, it's just a few more documentation we have to submit um, to, to share with HUD that we have the necessary steps in place to move those projects forward. They haven't penalized us in the past on any of our federal dollars um, when we have not quite met um, that 50% mark, but we do have to share with them what steps we have in place um, to, you know, to drive, drive those projects forward. Now we have been penalized uh, if we do not expend all those dollars um, you know, by the deadline, we just have, they will recapture um, the funds back. And so we want to ensure that uh, you know, we follow the timelines and um, stay in contact um, you know, with our, our departments so they're moving things forward. And we're doing what we can do in terms of communicating with HUD to execute, execute various things uh, to gain approval of these projects and the various milestones. I have a few questions, if I may, ma'am. Sure. Okay, great. Um, one is just to educate me because I, I'm not familiar with the processes. So I understand we have in the budget money to build, to put in generators, money to build fire depart, uh, fire station, et cetera. What is, how does the budget work for the life cycle cost of these projects? Because you can't just build a fire station and leave it, there's sustainment costs. So where, where are those funds going to come from? To sustain those costs like the fire station? Mm -hmm. Or upkeep on the generators, et cetera. It it comes from the city. The city okay. Expenses. Okay. Good it's question. a separate line of budgeting, I assume, sustainment costs. Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that question for me once again. I'm assuming it's a separate line uh, from the city budget sustainment cost. Yes, each division uh, is generally uh, receiving an allocation to help maintain various things uh, within their. Um, in their division. And so they have certain budgets in place to support them with various maintenance. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I did have a question about the generators. If you could go back to the uh, timeline projection slide on that one, please. 
Here we are. Yeah, that one. Um, I'm looking at the percentage complete and when the target completion dates were for some of these. And is the generator commissioning of March of next year still a realistic date, considering that many of these um, are below where they should be in terms of completion early on? So this completion date, uh, this timeline was actually just generated uh, just uh, a week or so ago um, from my engineer. So I feel pretty confident um, that he's uh, have that with that March date. As a matter of fact, we had we had actually a date of uh, much sooner to that, and then he said we're gonna have to really push it back to March based on some of the various other milestones that needs to be completed and work with the various contractors to ensure that they can get out to complete, you know, those various tasks. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he says that uh, we, he feel pretty confident that March would be the timeline that we should have it wrapped up. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time to answer my questions. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. Any, any further questions or concerns? We need to go back and look at another slide. Todd, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> good. Nope, none here. All good. <laughs> okay. Well, that really completes uh, our, our meeting, our update in regards to uh, our activities. Um, if something comes about, a uh, question comes up after today's meeting, please feel free to call me or send me an email. Uh, I will continue to provide uh, quarterly updates as relates to the projects as we move forward to kind of keep everyone involved on where we are uh, in terms of moving these projects forward. Uh, if there's ever any um, adjustment we have to make in terms of the budget, we do, like as I mentioned, have to do another substantial amendment. Um, and, and publish that and put that on our website. Of course, you all will be notified if that is the case. Um, but um, so, but anything, any other question in, in relates to um, before you receive a, a quarterly update, you want to reach out to me and ask, um, please feel free to do so. Great. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all uh, for, for taking some time this afternoon to, to participate in today's meeting. Um, I really enjoyed uh, the participation and the questions. And, uh, and I'll keep you all informed on the next, uh, next meeting that we have, okay? Okay. We need someone to make a motion to adjourn. I make a I'll motion make to adjourn. <laughs> second that motion. Thank you so much. <laughs>